The following video contains my attempt at simulating Dimitri's various psychedelic effects, keyword being attempt. It is impossible to truly recreate the experience, meaning this is just an artistic rendition at its best. According to YouTube's guidelines shown here, videos about drugs with the intent to educate or which are created for artistic purposes that are not graphic and do not glorify drug use are eligible for monetization and pass all community guidelines. This video does not display graphic use since no drugs are consumed within it, and it does not glorify the use of drugs. What it does do is artistically demonstrate what a trip might be like, and it educates the viewer about the very real dangers of consuming psychoactive substances in the most non-biased way possible. Thank you. In the following scene, we take a first-person point of view look to help simulate and also to help reenact what some would call the hallucinatory visual effects. However, even though we are filming this in a video game-like fashion, even though we are taking a first-person point of view, it must be made crystal clear that absolutely no drugs and no graphic use is being displayed in the following video. In fact, the only reason we are taking such a I don't know, silly take on what the effects would be like. The only reason we're trying to actually reenact this is to increase the dramatic effect of the video and to fully cooperate with both YouTube's advertiser friendly and community safety guidelines. We have employed the use of an empty hot sauce bottle as our makeshift pretend DMT pipe. In other words, this isn't a real pipe. This is a hot sauce bottle. And you know what? I think you are really going to enjoy what's to come. So. Again, the following is a non-graphic dramatized reenactment. No drugs have been consumed in this video, and the intent is to educate the viewer on the very real and not often talked about dangers of psychedelic use which are explained throughout my story. Thank you, and I'm super sorry for all of these necessary warnings. This is the last one, I promise. I'm not lying. Well, I, I don't promise I'm not lying, but I do promise that it's not the last one. I mean, I promise it's, it is the last one. It is. Again, this is a non-graphic dramatized reenactment, hence the black screen. No drugs have been consumed in this video. But the noise you are hearing is someone just sucking in air, like this. Moving forward. <laughs> You're not supposed to laugh, you're ruining the scene. <laughs> Moving forward, I am going to now intertwine animated visual replications as well as some artistic renditions with the telling of one of my most profound trip stories ever. I'd also like to point out that all of the animated effects that you'll be seeing throughout this video were created by either myself or the animator who goes by the name of <laughs> T breakthrough. In total, this video has taken hundreds of hours of work to complete and I've been working on it for over a month. In other words, if you guys want to see videos this crazy again, we 100% need your help on Patreon. And can you stop distracting me in the corner? You're dancing and I'm trying to record a video here. <laughs> If you guys want to show your support, you can follow the link to the right to our Patreon page, or you can also find it in the video description. And stop dancing! 
This is a dance? I need to let you guys know what my huge update is. I am currently in the midst of building my own website, meaning I will finally have my own space that I can host all of the deleted content and more. <laughs> Meaning, if you missed the first two versions of this video, you will finally be able to watch them on my own site. And if it's anything like how my merch shop has been going, you can expect it to be completed within five or 10 years. Uh, but anyway, let's get back to the video at hand, if I'm capable of doing that. The following story is one which took place when I was living abroad, back when I was living in New Zealand, big shocker there. Meaning, that was during a time when I was exploring these substances, which I no longer explore because I clearly have way too many responsibilities. And also, what follows is my very final warning. This time, I do promise this is the last one. I need to make it crystal clear to all of you guys watching that I do not promote the use of psycho-octave compounds. I'm being dead serious here, guys. These substances have the raw innate ability to seriously mess up your life if you take them at the wrong time and if you're not ready for what they have to show you. In other words, anybody out there who is watching this video and who might be curious to try these substances for themselves, well, you need to A, not follow in my footsteps, B, learn from my mistakes, and C, just proceed with as much caution as possible, meaning do as much research as you can and always test every substance before you intend to consume it. All right, now I am actually done for real. I hope you guys all enjoy the following story. Let's just jump right to the part of the story where I'm about to take my first ride on the roller coaster. So I grabbed a chair, sat it down right in front of my mirror, grabbed my pipe, grabbed my baggie of DMT, took a handful of it, sprinkled it right into the metal mesh in the neck of the bottle, took my lighter, let it all melt in, lit it up, took a big hit, exhaled, watched as things started to get brighter and that buzzing noise kicked in. I could hear it in the back of my head, rising in intensity. Took another big hit, exhaled some more mothballs. Next thing I know, I was getting sucked out of my body. I just remember the noise just raised higher and higher in frequency and pitch and just went I was in this space. And it was unlike normal reality. It's indescribable what it was. It was filled with unimaginable geometry. But there was creatures there. There were entities, there were beings, and I was surrounded by them. And these beings weren't evil by any means. They weren't demons or evil aliens. They were actually very benevolent. In fact, they greeted me as if I was family and they welcomed me into their world. I felt like I had gone home. I mean, it seems crazy saying that, but it felt like it was a place that I had been to before. I felt like I knew these beings intimately. It was as if I had just met my long lost family that I didn't even know I had. Upon seeing them and being greeted by them and just being in their presence and being in this new world, it was as if it all just came rushing back like a freight train. All this knowledge and these memories that I didn't even know I had were just all of a sudden back as if I never lost them. And the interesting part about this experience is when that happens, all of your memories and everything you know about this reality, it's gone. It's as if this reality no longer exists. This world, who you are here right now, your ego, your sense of self, Adam as I knew him, was dead. It's like when you're there, 
you're there. That probably makes very little sense to a lot of you guys watching, but that's what it's like. So anyway, I was with them and they all thought that whatever I was doing in this dimension was crazy. Why did you have to go and do that? I know that you think you have a mission to uphold and fulfill, but you know that it's whack, right? Like what you should be doing is you know, you should be here with us, but you demanded that you were gonna go and do this thing and now we're all just like, why is he doing that? And even you think it's stupid. And I was like, yeah, yeah, it's pretty stupid. Even though they thought that my mission in this reality was dumb, they still insisted that I left. I mean, I didn't want to leave them. I kept saying to them, no, I don't want to go. I want to stay here with you guys. Like, I I'm not going back to that. That place is scary. Crazy shit happens there. Like unimaginable terrors happen there. Keep me with you. Don't let me go back. But they insisted. They were like, no, 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 it's fine. You have to do that. Like we have no say in this, you're going back, but don't worry, they made this very clear, you will return to us. And the next thing I knew, I was getting sucked back to my body. I remember sitting on that chair, slowly opening my eyes, looking at my reflection in the mirror, looking over at Chris, who was sitting on the bed, kind of just looking at me wide-eyed, anticipating what I was going to tell him happened while I had been away on my little vacation. And um, all I could say was, I need to go back. So I grabbed the pipe, I grabbed the baggie of DMT, I sprinkled another unknown amount onto it, grabbed my lighter, took one big hit, and that was all it took, and then... I got sucked right back through that wormhole and there I was, back with my DMT brethren. And I don't really remember anything that happened at this point, I just remember that I was there and then next thing I know, I'm opening my eyes, back in the seat, and I'm still not ready to be back in normal reality. And Chris is looking at me and he's like, hey man, you done? You, you wanna hang out some more? I'm just like, no, no. There's more for me there. I, I haven't learned what I need to learn yet. So I grabbed the pipe, grabbed the bag of DMT, sprinkled some more on top, lit her up, sucked in big, exhaled, and... <laughs> Before I know it, again, I'm back in the DMT world. And this process of coming back and then going back there happened, I think, you know, two or three times. It wasn't anything too crazy. And it wasn't that I just really wanted to get high. I mean, that wasn't it at all. You would hardly compare smoking DMT to getting high. I'd more accurately compare it to <sighs> shit. There's really not much you can compare it to. I mean, how do you describe experiencing life in a parallel reality. So don't think that I was just trying to get high here. In fact, what I was doing was trying to take something from the DMT world back with me. Terence McKenna has often said uh, in his own lectures about DMT that if you could just take one of these artifacts back, just one of these crazy machines that these elves have created for you, back to this world, then you know for certain that all of reality would be forever changed. If I could get this thing back into my world, history would never be the same. This would confound my world beyond hope of recovery. It cannot exist. It wasn't like I was trying to bring back any machinery. I just wanted a piece of information that would help me in my life, and I do believe that I got that. One of my last times visiting with my family, uh, they told me that I would be with them when I died, that there was really nothing to be afraid of because this existence that I have currently in this world is temporary, and when it ends, uh, my essence, whatever that is, isn't gone for good. It's not deleted. And I can relate to that because when you go to that DMT world, it's not like I'm still Adam and I'm there, at least not for most of them. Different trips have different results. I mean, it's not necessarily all the same or predictable, but for these types of experiences, when you are in a different dimension, me and everything I know, everyone I love, everything that is familiar to me is eradicated. It's erased. I'm a totally different person. I don't even know if person is the right word. I'm something very different, but at the same time, 
I am still having that experience. It just sounds so wacky and weird, but that's what it's like. So I came back the final time and I remember slowly opening my eyes and it was like, I had finally got the message that I was looking for. And Chris said to me, he's like, bro, are you done yet? And I just looked at him and I was like, they told me that if I wanted to stay there with them, then I had to die. And he took this the wrong way. He thought that it meant the DMT had told me to kill myself, but that's not the case. I mean, I clarified for him after, but he definitely looked a little worried and concerned when I said that. Um, all it really meant is what I already said. Oh, when I die, I will join them. And that was really the only message that I needed to hear to let it go, to come back to this reality and to live my life. What I'd like to say, and this is what I said in the original video that that experience did for me, is it showed me in a sense that, you know, I don't have to fear death because I got my answer. Death isn't the final destination, that that's not it. You don't just disappear and you're not just gone forever. You continue on, it's more a metamorphosis. And you know what, I would love to say that I 100% believe that, but as long as I'm in this dimension, I am privy to certain things such as logic, it's very difficult to take a experience on a psychedelic as true fact, the rational part of my brain has a very difficult time putting that stamp of approval on that message and being like, yep, this is fact. You know what? When you die, you go and join the DMT entities. You will be there with them forever. Until you get bored of them, then you will come back here, have your mission, whatever that mission may be. And then when you're done with this mission, you'll go back, hang out with them. Then you'll be like, let's do another crazy mission. Let's go on some escapades. And it's just this process of flip-flopping for eternity. That just sounds totally whack, bro. It sounds nuts. Um, I'm not sure I can jive and get on board with that. What I will say is that I do believe whatever this experience is and whatever this experience has to offer us humans, I feel like we're just freaking talking apes. We give ourselves way too much credit. I think it's more than we can comprehend. I don't think that we have the capacity with our brains, at least not at this current level of evolution, to really grasp or get a firm grip on just what the f***ing hell is going on. I think there is some incredible shit happening there that goes beyond just I'm in a trip and my brain is in overload mode and you know it just doesn't know how to comprehend this so I'm just gonna have a crazy dream because it's not a dream. I have dreamt, okay? You guys, everyone watching has had a dream. This experience does not feel like a dream. It's as if right now while I'm talking to this camera, some entity reaches through the lens, grabs my soul, rips it out of my body and pulls me kicking and screaming into a different dimension. That's what it feels like. And it's not like you know that you're on a drug. As far as you're concerned, everything that is happening is 100% real. And that's why these experiences are so intimidating. And that's why they can cause such long lasting trauma. Because you cannot rationalize to yourself that it was just a trip. It can make you, you know, fear death less, but it can also make you fear death more when you feel like you've been shown that the reality beyond this one is so much more dark and terrifying. So it can really go both ways. I don't want to make it seem like you smoke DMT, you meet your long lost family and all of a sudden you feel like everything's okay and great and you can just get on with your life as if you have no worries anymore. Because that's not what happens, not at all. In fact, it leaves you with many more questions than it gives you answers. You're left with like 50 more questions for every one answer, it's just, it's insane. Uh, I don't even know if it's worth visiting that world, at least not for everybody. And I do want to make that clear that I'm not suggesting that this is the answer or that there really is any answer there because if anything, it's just more goddamn questions. <laughs> I was so confused for the longest time after these experiences because like I couldn't prove anything to myself and you can't. You can't prove shit. You just, you're left, uh, with very few people that you can even relate to in your everyday life, because obviously not everyone I know or grew up with smokes DMT or had that experience, and you do feel like an outsider from a lot of your friends, even your family, and it can be challenging to deal with, but that's a video all in its own self. If you guys enjoyed what you saw here, hit that like button, leave a thumbs up, and also leave a comment below and let me know what you would like to see next. And if you're someone who's been following me for a little while, let me know which trip report that I've removed uh, that you'd like to see remade in this way. 
because this was actually a lot of fun and I'd like to do more like this. Anyway, big shout out to everyone who's supporting us on Patreon. Again, if you want to see more animated videos like this, head on over to Patreon and help us reach our next goal. We are so close. Anyway, till next time, stay safe, everybody. If you intend to consume any drug, you need to use a test kit to make sure that it's the drug you think it is and that it's safe. There is a link to a test kit in the video description, and I will see you all in the next video.